What's cracking, big dogs? That was shit was good. I was singing fucking opera straight out of the, the dragon's mouth. Okay, we are ushering in a new era. As you can see, we are in the headquarters. We are on the floor. We are doing this fucking Kama Sutra style. Over the next few weeks, we will be getting chairs. We will be building a real table. We will be fucking around with the angles and cameras and editing style and everything involved. Uh, a brand new Fade the Public is coming to your fucking face holes. We're fading the public podcast. Yeah, we're fading our own <laughs> podcast to recreate ourselves. So you're going to find a better, newer, better version of Fade the Public over the coming weeks, over the coming months. Snacks is going to stay the same, though. He still yeah, sucks. Snacks will be equally as fucking <laughs> shitty as he's always been. <laughs> Animal will be fucking as dumb as he's always been as well. Uh, I will continue to bring the fucking heat, as I always do. And, uh, man, I, it feels fucking good to be back, boys. Yeah, it does. We've been together yeah, for, what, like 14 hours? I'm sick of you guys already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, snacks. I'm ready to go home. I can't wait to go home. Yeah, you said you couldn't wait to go home like 42 times I'm already. I'm just trying to, like, chill on the couch the rest of the day. And just well, I'll take an Uber. It's fine. Yeah, that's all right. Please, take an Uber. Just call it now. It'll be here in, like, five <laughs> minutes or so. Yeah, it took 30 minutes for my Uber to take me home Saturday. Like, from, I had to wait 30 fucking minutes. From where? Josh and Nina's. Were they yeah. in now? Okay, 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 okay. What do you what do you say we do things that are productive and, and valuable and fucking... Well, we don't do that any time, so why start that's now? That's a trick question, clump baby. Clump baby. I'm ready to roll. I do want to make one announcement before we start, even though I've already made like 15 announcements. We are going to be doing something sort of, sort of special. This is the first time we've done anything like this, and this is in honor of our Mr. Friend Snacks over there. Oh, I was going to remind you. I'm happy. I'm yeah, happy. you don't have to remind me. I got a fucking elephant brain over here, not only in size, but in capacity. Snacks is officially 10 years cancer free as of Sunday. Oh, man. Clap there it up. Go. Clarp it up. Clarp it up. So uh, I see a lot of comments like this. Snacks really have cancer. Listen, like Ari Gold says, we are assholes, but we are not liars. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> we, lo we love cheaters. We hate liars. Snacks did go through cancer. I remember the first time I ever got pulled over from a police officer was on the way back from visiting you at the hospital. I just oh whooped your, God, I whooped right. your ass in a game of Madden, and that's I was true. so fired up. I was driving like 92 miles an hour it's on the way home. It's pastime, huh? Just getting yeah, his ass looking mad. <laughs> yeah. You know, with, with, with a chemo stick running through my veins, I'm getting... I, felt, I felt bad, but there's no... No excuses. Yeah. There's, I, wasn't le I wasn't letting up on snacks, no matter you, what you kind of cancer. You could be on your last breath, and I'll fucking put it in the end. 100%. Though. I would hope so. I, I was actually trying to give you worse <laughs> cancer at the time. <laughs> Make you fucking Listen, nine, nine bleed. Survival rate, so. Uh, so, in, in honor of snacks' 10-year cancer-free as of whenever you guys are watching this, five days ago, Sunday... We will be putting everything in our store. 100% of proceeds, 100% of profits will be going directly to St. Jude's? Yes, correct. Okay, so if you guys head over to Big Dogs Fantasy, if you, if you purchase Big Dogs gear, if you purchase Fade the Public gear, if you purchase uh, Bunk Bed Breakdown gear, whatever the fuck you see on BigDogsFantasy.com, 100% of the profits are going directly to St. Jude's. I know, uh, you know, listen, there's a lot of donations going to COVID right now, but there are other people suffering from other things. And uh, we got we to gotta spread the wealth around a little bit. Make the kids happy. Make yep. the kids happy. Make yep. the kids whole for the again. Kids. For the kids. For the kids. For the kids. For the kids. It's good. It's good. For the fucking kids. It's for the kids. It's for the kids. So head over to BigDogsFantasy.com. All the profits straight to St. Jude's. And again, uh, snacks. Congrats, brother. We're glad that you're here Thank with us. I know you're not Thank glad you. to be here I with us, glad. but no, I wish but vice versa, we are. We are excited about we, that. We do actually like you, so. Yeah. Unfortunately. No what we say. No, that's good. I'm glad somebody does. Yeah. And so it's a really nice thing that Nick is doing. So thank you. And thank you to everybody that is going to... Uh, is going to help save you. Are you just assuming people are going to buy? 100%. Wow. Yeah. You have to do it. It's for the fucking kids. Cunt. It's for the fucking ah, kids. It's for kids. All right. So uh, I'm, I'm ready to dive in. BigDogsFantasy.com. Scotty boy. I've never been as excited as I am right now to say, hit the motherfucking intro. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, and more gentlemen, here's what we got on tap today. We're going to run through our Go Fade Me League and talk about some of the things that have been happening, waiver wire pickups. This is our, our, our dynasty league. We're in the second year. We're going to talk about a lot of the trades that have gone on recently that we're going to break down, see how it fits in the in the scope of the league as a, uh, overall, and we are going to get into a herd of goats. We're going to be doing herd of goats basically weekly, which is our favorite segment on the show, which is pretty much our... Uh, our Mount Rushmore. Herd of Goats, the topic today is endings, the end of things. Anything that 
you want to choose the ending for is viable for picking. We've already got our got our choices in place, and it's good. It's fucking well, good. One. I just want to put this out there. I want to put it out into the universe. If I don't win this herd of goats, oh, here we go. the fix is in. Okay, then that's I, all I, I got, have to say. I got news for you. The fix is in. The fix is in. If I don't win this, the one. fact that you even have to say that just makes you a push. Shut your mouth. Wait, shut your mouth. Yeah. So we're gonna do the herd of goats. We're gonna put the poll on Twitter. We're gonna put the poll on Instagram, and you guys can vote and let Animal know that the, <laughs> the fix, fix is, is in. in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Animal, let's start off with a couple of trades that you had sent through. You, I've been busy. You've been busy. So 18 days ago, we were really catching up now. This was, bef- this was after the rookie draft, right? You received Tyler Lockett, Hunter Renfro, Alshon Jeffrey. You gave up Amari Cooper and Adam Humphreys. And you dropped Patrick Laird, who made his way onto my team, which I literally couldn't be more excited about. It's easily going to be the waiver wire pickup of the year. Thought process on your trade. Because looking at it right now, I think... Without a doubt, the most valuable piece in that trade Zamari was Cooper. Zamari Cooper. And you had been shopping exactly. him to me. You had been shopping him to Snacks for a while, trying to get some kind of Julio or DeAndre Hopkins action. Why are you so hell-bent on getting rid of Amari Cooper? And why did you think the, these fucking secondary pigeon pieces were good enough to make up for Amari Cooper? Jeff, that was for you, pigeon. Listen, I think that you guys are very low on Tyler Lockett. He literally produces the same every single year. He's just going to be in that same that wide receiver 10 to 15 spot. Every year, he's going to have his – his production is there. That's what I – and as long as Russell Wilson is there, I'm not nervous about it. He's 27. You know, Hunter Renfro is a piece that I'm, I'm hoping I can move. I didn't make this trade thinking like, oh, I got Hunter Renfro. I'm going to start him in my no, life. No, you made the trade to get Hunter Renfro because you know how much I love him. And that's, that's I, I was surprised. I thought Part Renfro would be a, try and flip a big animal guy. For, uh, for D-Hop with all my picks, I'm trying to put a package together. So I'm still making moves. Ren- Renfro moves the needle on a D-Hop trade? With you know, four or five picks, maybe, yeah. Just yeah. have an extra player. I don't know if Renfro is the, is, is the piece that does anything there. Well, I, I do agree on the Lockett side, though. I think I think Lockett's starting to be underrated. I think in the in the beginning of the offseason, I was immediately like, he's a sell-high candidate because he's soon to be the number two on that team. He's getting... Yeah, I'm not buying the whole DK narr- wide receiver one narrative in Seattle. Who, who are you taking a redraft straight up this year? If you could pick one on Lockett. the team, not value doesn't matter. Lockett. Lockett or Metcalf? Lockett. Lockett. Yeah. They had the same amount of targets yeah. last year. DK had like 20 drops. Or I don't know if it was drops, but... I'm with Lockett, too. I, I think... No, it, Lockett missed a few games. He's banged up end of the year. He's still stud. So. He was 16. He's played 16 Did for three, he? well, three he straight. Got, he got banged up for... Uh, well, he got hurt and they had that... But he had the really serious injury. Right, so right, maybe right. He, he left early or something. He had yeah. the serious injury. He had like fucking... People with, were saying he's going to be out week? for a while. Right. By week, I think he yeah, came yeah. back and like barely... He, the problem was he was going nuts at the beginning of the year. He went six for 100 in week eight. 13 for 152 week nine and then the next four game logs three for 26 yeah. one for 38 zero for zero four for 43 Fell off a cliff after that. He, he finished strong though four for 62 nine for 136 and a tug so i think the the chemistry between lockett and, and russell wilson is just like super underrated yeah it's undeniable that like every year as long as they're on the field together i'm not worried about lockett it just doesn't seem like he has that much of a ceiling. Like, I feel like last year was basically he's not his... a sexy player. Like, nah. He's not like one of those big names where you hear him and you get excited about it. But like he's a he's a very he's high a value floor pick in like fifth sixth. So round. so when when the Cowboys drafted Ceedee Lamb, that's really when your Amari Cooper love fell off because you've been raving and, and ranting about the guy. Yeah, yeah I was all season. in on Cooper wide receiver three this year, but he yeah. would have been ranked really high for me it's too. Just a, it's a matter of just target distribution yeah, now. It's all. It's not talented. It's well, just who knows hope. where the targets are going. Yeah. yeah. Well, I let's, still let's, think Amari is the number one in that offense. You had to get rid of Amari now. Um, now is the time to move Amari because well, his value is only going to get worse. I he's think. young. People, you could still trade him on the fact that he's like you know technically still twenty five years old, soon to turn twenty six. But the the problem is like he'll have his wide receiver one season this year, and then before you know it, like CD is going to be much more integrated into the offense. And uh, by the time CD starts. You know, Amari's, Amari, Amari's target ceiling is going to go this year from like 150 down to probably like 130, yeah, trickle down to roof. 120, yeah. you know. And by the time that starts happening, he's going to be 27, 28, and you're going to wish that you had moved him a little bit I, earlier. You know, I was looking at Amari's numbers from last year, too, on his like, you know, points per game and everything. It averages out. It's okay. But like when you look at the actual, he had a couple of games, like it was a 34 point game, a 26 point. It fucks. He had a lot of shit games. Yeah, I, I think like it was like game to he game? came into the year with that injured foot, though, too. I think he was banged up for a lot of the year. But uh, he started off hot first three games. Yeah, yeah, I remember he started off absolutely on fire. Yeah, everyone was worried about the the foot yeah. injury, but he came. Oh, it was a plantar fasciitis or whatever? Yeah, I mean, that, that's that's injury. Amari Cooper in a nutshell. It's just like wild, play through injury every wildly year. inconsistent and going to play through injury pretty uh-huh. much. Yep. I just wanted someone like my big theory was the way I'm building my team. You'll see with my other trades is Love I'm this. trying to have Here we go. high 
Mediocre. floor guys. Uh, uh, that's what I meant. Just guys that I can rely on. They're going to get me the, the 8 to 15 points, and then I have my Tyreek Hill who can explode and help me win every week. I feel you. Scott, do me a favor. Put like a little uh, layover here that says Big Dogs Fantasy, 100% of pro f- profits go to my pot. I mean, uh, St. Jude's. <laughs> uh, okay, so so you move. Let us let us know what you think about these trades. Who took the dub? How bad Animal got raped in most of I already of know people are going to decide. 100%. Ben. You're going to get shit I, on. I do. To me, I don't love it. But I don't hate it, so I guess I'm kind of right. I, I don't think it was like a total L. I just think like Cooper's a guy that maybe you could have squeezed some more value yeah. out of if you kept pushing. I agree, trades. but the problem was everyone in our league was so down on him. I tried shopping him, man. That's, I wasn't yeah, getting that, that's a point. That's a point I'm going to make too. That our league is not easy to trade with. Is that no. A good, what do you good mean? There's like a billion trades going. Oh, on Oh, I know there's time. a billion trades by like three people. <laughs> so it's yeah. a little difficult. So I, I guess I can understand why you pulled the trigger there. Yeah, and I mean, I was trying to trade you, I Cooper, what, for I, D-Hop. I'm down. No I, I prefer it. D-Hop over Cooper. So. All right, let's move to your second trade. Animal got David Johnson and next year's th- uh, late third, and Snap gets Curtis Samuel and next year's mid fourth. Uh, so this this just seems like you're looking for like a, a low end flex RB two flex play for just this year. I mean, at the time, yes. Yeah, this looks like you are uh, thinking that you're in win now mode, which is a huge mistake by you. Oh, I am in win now mode. Oh boy, look at my quarterbacks and, and I'm my, good. I'm good. And my 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 only weakness is my running backs because I'm not That's, sure about and, and the, well the best well, you part got about David Johnson the best part and about, got weaker. The best part about fantasy football is well, running Johnson's backs don't gone. matter. So <laughs> yeah, David Johnson made your core weaker. So all right, so you're are, is this you saying that you gave up on Curtis Samuel? Uh, no, it was just that Snap actually still liked him. The problem was with Curtis Samuel is I still like Curtis Samuel, but no one else does. Yeah. Everyone hates Curtis Samuel right now. He's a big buy low. I mean, yeah. there's no re- there's no, there's no way you could sell him high because there's no exactly. one that actually so, the fucking fact likes him. I got him. to upgrade, uh, you know, a whole round for the draft and the pick. I traded a fourth for a third and I got a guy like David Johnson who, if I was going to I don't to hate the trade him, for you. I don't hate the trade, but the thing, I, if we keep going, I, I traded David Johnson already. He's gone. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Gone. So you moved David Johnson. Then me and Snacks had a trade go through. Yes. So it was, I get Matt Ryan. He gets uh, Sammy Watkins, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and then my first rounder yeah. next year. So This trade is disgusting for you. I agree. Absolutely <laughs> gross. Like I don't. People made fun of my trades. You got two players that are going to retire like halfway through the season and a first round pick. You got a first round pick from Matt Ryan. So you got so one eleven. So Jay, my congrats. team was 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 hurting for a quarterback. So I wanted to help. You, the, he's given us such a big opportunity. Why wouldn't I try and help him? That's that. what I'm talking about. Like the little things like that. When it comes to a. Uh, I did uh, it with Scott in, earlier in the year. I gave, him, trades, I gave him Zach Ertz. There's for, so much more than just the players involved. Like he needed a quarterback so bad, he probably would have paid even more. Down the road when it gets closer, maybe like, and maybe you know, he wouldn't have. So all I have is Russell hostage. Wilson and I, and hoping that Ryan Fitzpatrick starts like eight games and hoping that Cam got somewhere. So I needed a quarterback really, really badly. And me and Snacks had been in negotiations Close. for a while. We tried to do something because he he's been in rebuilding. He's trying to get rid of Matt Ryan and Hop, but there was just too. I was I was going to give up too much if I had to get both of those pieces. Yeah, so, I was a little bummed out about that. Yeah, so I we eventually we something nice work, but yeah, we eventually just decided that like. I basically gave him my first next year. I was against trading my first for next year. Then I'm like, you know, for Matt Ryan, I think that's good value because he's still like relatively young compared for your to your team. You're literally that's could be championship. In right terms there. of what we both needed, yeah, it was like a, a exactly. straight, straight and up. I have one. said numerous times that I lose the trade. I know I lose the trade. Also, but, you don't know where that pick's gonna end up. Like, no. I have a good team, but like one or two injuries, and I don't know. have good depth. You could never know. And for me, I have been trying to do what exactly I want to do. I'm trying to blow the fucking thing up. Unlike you, I see my team. I see mediocrity. So if I see mediocrity, why sit in the middle and finish seventh and eighth and just keep wasting fucking money while when I could try and get these picks and hopefully they fucking hit. And if they don't, I'm still losing money regardless. But at least I'm trying. Yeah. I'm not staying in limbo. If if your team fucking yeah. stinks like snacks is, we just put up a video last week on Monk Bed Breakdowns last Wednesday. Not this previous Wednesday, two days ago, but a week and two days ago. The art of rebuilding. So if you're in fluctuation, you don't really know what to do with your dynasty team. You've kind of been in and out of maybe the last seat of the playoffs or just like seventh, eighth place over and over again. We tell you how to fucking blow that shit up like Al-Qaeda and uh, refix your team a little bit. So yeah. go watch that. I didn't watch that. Yeah, you did. You literally immediately <laughs> said good good episode like the next day. I know it was. It was very good. But this was <laughs> after my trade. So, yeah. so Animal <laughs> Animal uh, racks up the next two trades. God damn, Al. You've been very busy this offseason. Yeah, so, quietly. You've been very busy. I, really I think your team got... Had, only Stay my insane. second and third. I had no first round for this year, and I've now I've got you know two seconds and two thirds, 
and uh, I'm feeling good. So yep. the next trade, so the next trade, James Washington. You got James Washington and Devin Devin's Bush, uh, the three three. Which who knows what that's going to be? Probably between three three and three six. Yeah. yeah, like early mid third early. rounder, and then you gave up Will Fuller. I actually really like this trade for you. Me too. Talk because I honestly I've been trying to flip Will Fuller. I like Will Fuller as a guy. Easiest fucking trade candidate to move right now. Exactly because people are they're they're in on him because of you know D Hop's gone. They think he's going to be the guy there, and he's shown that if he's on the field, he's fucking good, man. He's fast. Mm. And I mean, fancy wise, he's just a great complimentary yeah, piece. Like but if you ask him to be the alpha, Watson, he'll never, he'll never not, do that's that. That's the thing. Not gonna be I don't that. see. And listen, the injuries. No. It's, you know, it's it's every year. Six six weeks. In, Literally can't count on the guy to play hamstring. more than ten games. Give me the third round pick. The fact that I would have taken just the third. round I was pick about for Will to say, Fuller, if I got just the third, I might have accepted. That. I was going to just take that, and then I just threw in James Washington, and he said, "Okay." Yeah, so Washington's like a, in a good dart though right now because no one really likes him coming off the year. Everyone's expecting a bounce back from Juju. Everyone's expecting Dante Johnson to break Chase out. Claypool. They take Chase Claypool second round. They sign Eric Ebron. So Washington seems like the odd man out, but like he had some good games last year, and who knows? Like we never know what the fuck's going on in the yeah, NFL. Yeah, I figured so. for like as much as I would probably start Will Fuller, like yeah. just give me James Washington sit on my bench if I have to throw him in yeah. one day. Will Fuller's not going to be the game changer that pushes your no, team exactly. forward. So I, I I really like that you got the pick you for get that the third round pick and James Washington for a guy who may play six games a year. Yep. Yep. So th- this next trade, trade uh, this this is. This is a questionable one because of the player involved. Some yeah. people so don't you got Kelvin that. Harmon and next year's same pick from last trade in the third round. You got the second rounder version of this. So we'll just say the 203. We're just going to use whatever picks it has in there for now. So Kelvin Harmon, the 203 in 2021, David Johnson, and the 308. So basically, you are giving up the 308 and David Johnson to secure the 203. Yes. Um, I can't imagine you have that much faith in Kelvin Harmon. I do, actually. Believe it or not, I, um, I'm a big Kelvin Harmon uh, believer. I think the talent is there. I just think last year with the the quarterback situation, switching back and forth, he was a rookie. He didn't have really a chance to break out. Well, I, I just I, I'm I was curious when you made the trade because you had just part of it for David Johnson, thinking that okay, you're getting just this year, you're getting hopefully you know an RB one, hopefully probably. Well, that's not. why I sold him to a team so, like Scott, who's a com, you know, contender. But it seems like your, your thought process is in is in flux. Well, see, I'm still in trade mode still. I'm still trying to take the second round pick now. I'm going to try and flip that pick for something. Yeah, I was going to say, for someone who's like thinking they're in win now mode, you're, oh, yeah. no, you're, I'm trying you're looking to move, at future heavy. I have four picks. I have two seconds and two thirds. I'm trying to move all of them for a big player. Interesting. That's the plan. I'm give me those. To, give me some. I'll I'm trying to get something going uh, uh, here because I feel like I'm a player away. Do you have any firsts no. next year? No. No, that's what I do not have. I was going to say, I'll give you fucking Joe but Kel- And also, behind my Kelvin Harmon love here, I have... Antonio Gandy Golden. So I'm thinking my, my thought process. Like I here said, is, you have every Redskins receiver except the one that matters. Well, yeah, McLaurin's the clear guy to own, but someone else is going to get the ball there. Someone is going to be the wide receiver too. It's going to be Golden or it's going to be Harmon. The question isn't who's going to be the question isn't who's going to be the wide receiver too. The question is, does it fucking matter? I think it will. I think it won't. With Ron Rivera there, and it's a whole new team. I don't know. That was not a good selling point. What a new coach that's been historically yeah. good in the NFL. Yeah, they're just not going to be a high-powered offense outside of Terry McLaurin, maybe Darius guys. The only time Ron Rivera had a higher-powered offense when he came. I don't think you guys are all. I want this on record. I want everyone to know. Everyone is sleeping on Antonio Gandy Golden. Trash. Sleeping on him. No, to trash. It's going to be fucking a stud. I'll Noted. take a wait. Did you just say you'll, you'll you'll give him Joe Mixon for a first? No, not straight up. Absolutely not. Well, but that's what I, you just said. Well, I asked him if he had first because he said he was ready to give up two seconds, two thirds, and I asked him if he had a first too for Joe Mixon. I'll give you a first round pick for Joe Mixon. I I'll just, throw in Chris Herndon too. That just went negative. I'd rather have the roster spot. <laughs> okay, so uh, I actually I like this move from Scott's side a little bit actually because because he has the pick, capital. he has the picks, and he has a team that's ready to. Ready yeah, to he has yeah. a team that's ready to compete. So David Johnson is really just like a depth piece that will if if one of his running back gets hurt, he can get him in there for like eight or nine and dude, points a me game. And Max I were do talking like about that. This the other day, if he hits, it's going to be good. Like he's going to probably no, get the volume. Ain't shit. I can't imagine. I just don't see David Johnson. I can't. I can't here's imagine. the problem with David Johnson. Same thing for three years now. I completely he, here's agree. the problem with David Johnson. When, when it comes down to it, like. He's been one of the worst inside runners in the NFL Terrible. for like for like legit three years now, and that had nothing to do with injuries. But even before no, he was injured last bad. year, yeah. he's really bad at running the ball. And Deshaun Watson does does not dump the ball off to his running backs. Yeah, you know what, what I mean? Talking about. Like Deshaun Watson will run it himself or yeah. fucking throw it away. Like he's not gonna fucking. That's why it was so like when they traded for Duke Johnson last year. Just yeah, exactly. Look, yeah. look at Duke Johnson. Duke Johnson was the guy that everyone thought. Was gonna come. It was in, like a six round passes. pick. I remember Deech took him in like the sixth round, yeah, and, I know. and he, he, he get that one. High. He was like, oh, he, you know, everybody was too it was high. Madness. Yeah. It's all this just this hype that people like. 
I don't know why it doesn't die down. Like normally some of these things like they'll happen and then it will die down. You'll be like, okay, come back to earth. That would make no sense. Why were we thinking like that? But like David Johnson for three years now just keeps getting the hype and I don't get it. Well, yeah. and he's about to be like, he's like 28 years old. Just clearly. People, people That's just nice. keep looking at Carlos Hyde and they're just like, look, if Carlos Hyde can get 200 touches, I'm just like, yeah, Bill O'Brien fucking is trash. So maybe it could happen, but it's just, look, I don't know. Carlos Hyde's a way better in between the tackles runner than yeah. David Johnson. Yeah. Like not even close. He doesn't catch passes. The, the so. Johnson no. thing, the Johnson thing is can, just though. purely, I think, cool. like volume. Cool. Cool. I'm not going to entertain that he shit. He can what did catch you say? passes. He can Carl, catch are you passes. About Carlos fucking Hyde. Yes. He's just saying he can. All right. Like, um, fuck you for even saying. Now I'm riled up. Now I'm yelling. Why are you yelling? <laughs> oh. Okay, so that's the recap for our trades. Do we have any interesting, like, waiver wire pickups that happened? There was one more trade. Was there? Where? Well, this was a long time ago when I traded Zeke. Yeah, you want to get into that? Knows, but you just don't want to get into that. No. I feel like we... I don't think we talked about it. No? Okay. Well, I know you, we did. You could jump in if you want. Twitter. I, went crazy. I, I traded we Zeke. I traded Zeke for DeAndre Swift and two seconds. Now, I think those two seconds are going to be early in the second round. Because yeah. I don't care if they're the 2-1 two 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 and the 2-2. Two two. You should have got a first-round pick for Zeke. Yep, I tried. Couldn't do it. Well, then you shouldn't have made the trade. You should have waited. Well, I did. And you were, my you was, acted like my was team a, is better than yours in you two years, were I'm coming back to this video, and I'm going to fuck you in a you goddamn ass. You acting like there was a gun to your head to trade Zeke, or fucking someone's going to take him off your team. Yeah. I, was, I like People get trade happy during the summer, and I, the, best, the single best time to trade players is right before your trade deadline in season when you know what the roster uh what, what the playoff spots are looking like because scott has so many firsts next year that if he knows he's about to compete he's one running back piece away he'll trade him for he'll a trade player. zeke yeah. and he'll, like, he'll like, trade those two first to get that champ yep. that chip maybe he's also yep. a fucking hoarder so yeah i'm just spinning could have got it from somewhere facts today hot truth all over the place where everywhere this whole podcast today i'm so fucking on fire and everyone's going to be like, oh, animal, like, you don't know what you're talking about. You're garbage. <laughs> but you're wrong. You're wrong. I oh, think you know what you're talking about. Wait, Richie, about Richie actually might have made. Okay, so. Oh, trade, was this the Stidham trade? The Christian Kirk and Stidham? That's not what I was going to say. Oh, a, a waiver wire pickup. Oh, so oh, we're talking sorry. about Redskins, the second weapon to own. Richie, pretty Richie, picked up Jeremy Sprinkle. <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> a bitch. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Clunt baby. Clunt baby. <laughs> Richie! I'm, like, I'm looking like for a serious player. I know. I, I fucking love fucking Richie. Psyched up. All right. Well, that's the recap on the Go Fade Me Dynasty League. I'm ready to get into fucking herd of goats. Let's you guys go! ready? Do you want to do the um no the Cody's question from uh, la, 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 yeah the chat okay yeah so quick. in our in our group chat we're gonna start infiltrating this a little bit more into the episodes too as we start to cover the Go Fade Me Dynasty League. Codeine, little young Codeine over great there. Great guy, really great guy. Good guy, good guy. Good guy, I wouldn't say great. No, I'd say phenomenal. Just, just kidding, fucking phenomenal. Yeah. Really, I'd fuck him. Great kid. Honestly. Yeah. I'd put it in his clunt. Clunt. <laughs> <laughs> he asked, uh, he was in the middle of a dynasty startup, a big dog's dynasty startup. By the way, Ooh, if y'all are trying to get into a dynasty, if y'all are trying to get into a dynasty startup, we have them fucking just absolutely popping off left and right like animals sucking down viagra pills we got big dogs dynasty leagues in the discord channel so the discord channel is fucking incredible we have almost two thousand people in it now which is fucking Crazy. blowing it's my mind growing don't get fucking don't miss out I, ju yeah just know that this is you know everybody's done it in the past so, so it's it's basically uh yeah sort of like animal's girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> i'm on fire right now i'm sorry you cannot stop the kid go join the discord channel where it's literally people just talking football and fantasy football 24 7 and you can head in there. We got free leagues, $50 leagues, $100 leagues. I think they even did a $500 league this year where y Yannick, Yannick, Yannick paid like five of the buy-in. <laughs> <laughs> um, so go go join the Discord channel. Go join Discord. That Yannick will be linked alone. in the description. You guys can jo go join some Big Dogs League. That's completely free to join. Link will be down there. Uh, young Codeine said he was in the middle of a startup, and he got to the, I believe it was a 302 maybe? 302 or yes. 304, I believe he said. 302 or 304, version. whatever it was. And uh, he already took Zeke with his first pick at the 104 Russell Wilson with the 208 whatever it is the next pick uh and then it, it is a super flex league so he said Josh Allen Jonathan Taylor both sitting on the board this is uh super flex dynasty half PPR animals first animal instinct was never Josh Allen take all the RBs and then this was his piece of analysis on Josh Allen on Twitter which can't really argue the fact to be honest with you uh snacks choice take I said JT happy for you that's, I mean, I, I disagree with the never Josh Allen thing. I actually like Josh Allen, you know, with the rushing and all his I, upside I there. I love Josh but, Allen but, for redraft. Love him for yeah, redraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah. This, Not this, yeah. Uh, that, that's a fair point. And that's, the inaccuracy usually plays itself out over the long run, I feel right. like. 
Right. So yeah. for for redraft having his I'm really surprised is, JT I'm surprised JT fell, fell to the 304. Far, I'm Noah and Mike are putting together the ADP, the ADP from ADP from all fucking all the paid leagues that we have so far. They're like doing it on the back end, so we'll have actual ADP data from all the big dog startups. Sweet. Uh, so the information will be good, but I'd imagine that Jonathan Taylor is going far, far, far I earlier say late than the 304. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say like some anywhere between mid like the 205 mid to, mid to the 212. Yeah. yeah, so that I think was an absolute steal. Uh, Allen's not a guy I'm dying to get. The fact that you already have Russell Wilson, I'm not, I'm not like hell bent on getting yeah. a yeah, second quarterback. For Superflex, if I get my one quarterback early, like we did in our mock draft the other week, we got our one guy that we were comfortable with, and then you wait till like yeah, the and, six, seven and in round, co- and in co- next guy. I don't know the board. I didn't see the board, but yeah, if he wants, if he's hell bent on on securing his. His second quarterback. You got guys like Darnold and Daniel Jones that'll probably exactly. be there. The, the way you, yeah, the way you got to look at it is exactly that. It's like okay, I could take Taylor here and then get you know Daniel Jones in the fourth, so it's DJ and JT. Yeah, right. Or you could be like Josh Allen and like Chris Leonard Carson. Fournette or Chris Carson, yeah, and, and like, you'd much the rather the have Taylor you, there. Exactly. When you like that's something that like you should actually like kind of when you're in these situations in any type of a draft, like when you're looking at the board, like look at that. Like all right, if I'm gonna take. Him now, who would I get in the next round? And then compare those two players with who you – and see who you like more. Yeah, like, it's yeah. It's such an easy way to figure out for people, what the right move it's is. It's simple. It for, is. For it pe- is simple. For people doing Dynasty for the first or second year, one of the most difficult things is is understanding, like, the value of picks, both in startups and rookie draft, or when you're trading them and stuff, because you get a lot of offers, and really all you see is numbers. And until you have a couple drafts in your back pocket, you don't really – understand the board so what i would do is like when you get offered picks look at what players are going around that area and then use the player as the actual value in the trade or something like that that makes it a little bit easy for you so yeah i, I would definitely go jt there just just yeah. secure that fucking bag on the rb yes yeah, it wasn't even close. You, set, you set it running back for yeah now you got zeke jt minimum. yeah it feels fucking pretty damn good coding's team ended up being really yeah, really really beast. solid he went zeke 104 russell wilson 209 jt 304 dk metcalf 49 Cortland sutton 54 Terry at the 6-9, DJ Chark 7-4. I'm not sure what the rest of the team went, but beautiful, beautiful, beautiful start from a beautiful, beautiful boy, Mr. Cody. Love you, Cody. Uh, We got our Dynasty startup. We got our NYC League, which unfortunately we probably won't get to do the whole NYC weekend and draft vlog and everything that is the the channel premiere. If you go to youtube.com slash Nick Ercolano, it's like the, the trailer for my entire channel. That vlog's always a lot of fun, but everyone travels from all over the country, so... Good chance it doesn't happen this year. Uh, so to complement that, we will be doing a dynasty startup starting two days from now. Starts on Sunday, so we will cover that probably in the next week. It's us three: uh, Mike, me up, Noah. If you watch Bunkbed Breakdown, Scott, our editor, of course, and then the other guys that are in the NYC league. Bunch of cunts. Tell all these jerks off. Put your money against my team. Do your life against mine. Hundred bucks. See what you got. Talk. Ooh, you see. Ooh, see. Ooh, see. Talk. I mean for Nick, but Nick. You guys like him. You like him on YouTube. He's a great guy to you guys. He's a piece of shit. Steve feeling himself right now. He threw pancake powder on me. Everything's a conscious fucking effort, baby. That's it. Embrace the hype. The longest draft I've ever been a part of. I'll tell you what, it's like going to war. I'm fucking happy to have gone to war with y'all. What it do, baby? Yeah, so it's gonna be ridiculous. I'm gonna hate it, and uh, I'm like very, very, very excited. I'm excited for, for the it draft. Too. I'm excited I'm, for you guys because you had no idea what to do the first time. No, and now, oh, now yeah. you get like redemption fucking on cool. it. You know, yeah. it, it's it's, wait, it's, like, it's like, funny how Dynasty like. The way I explain Dynasty to people is like you the first year you kind of have no idea what the fuck you're doing. Mm-hmm. There's a point during the season or like the next season where things just click and you're like, oh, I'm starting. This is how much I yep. fucked up then. Yeah, you know, like you don't start. You don't understand. I still don't hate like my problem was I I had a great strategy. I just didn't execute it well. I remember you I and Scott just back. kept trading back and trading back and trading yeah. back, but then you kept passing on all good players and kept trading <laughs> back. <laughs> trading back too yeah. far. So th- that's why I see like a lot of people starting to create Dynasty content now, and none of them have ever... I, I know a lot of them haven't played Dynasty before, and I'm like, I don't care, but like you're going to give out a lot of bad advice because you, you don't like actually understand the the context of like Dynasty altogether. They're so ruining people's lives. Literally. They're, they're literally ruining a lot of people's like, lives. Like, just think about Yannick. He has probably, I don't know, 60, 70... K invested in dynasty <laughs> minimum <laughs> so uh giving out bad advice like that is just unbecoming and it's fucking rude so stop disrespectful it's rude this will uh be the end of our go fade me segment which Yo. transfers into our herd of goats Ooh. 
the best. Play. And what did you say? You fucking kidding me? That was beautiful. <laughs> I disagree. I've been segueing like a fucking. Your segue before was really good. I've been segueing like a fucking pro all morning, all night, all fucking. I'm evening. fucking spitting hot fire. This guy today. went to sleep at fucking midnight. Yeah, no. We're all playing mad until 2 a.m. Yeah, I was up at 6 o'clock fucking working today. You fucking cunts. You're setting... I'm going to set my alarm for 7.30 to move my car. At 7.57, I walked <laughs> down to tell you to fucking move I your car. I was awake. Yeah, but you you're weren't doing... You're acting like we got up I was like up at 7.30. I came up here to Woke take a piss and you were taking a dump. Well, you're acting like I went to sleep at fucking 8 o'clock. Well, you went to sleep at midnight. That's kind of early. What to, we're having a, We were having a fucking slumber party. We missed you. No. We started fucking crying. We're playing mad. We're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I heard you. You're loud as fuck. Going, this I motherfucker leaves bed. Entourage on all night. <laughs> 5.30 in the morning. Guy that falls asleep with the TV on. I tried turning it down low enough where I snatched to still hear it on the couch at a comfortable level, but we would be able to fall asleep. In a sense, though, had it, it could, on seven. It could be worse. It was entourage. It wasn't like blood sports. No, I actually like stayed up and started listening to some of the yeah. fucking episodes. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is pretty yeah, cool yeah, to have yeah. this Vinny in the back so in the bike round. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let us Who's let a... us do a herd of goats. Snacks. You have G1. the G one. You are I do on the clock. And I made my selection in about 0.7 seconds. Best endings. Happy endings. <laughs> Boom. Done. Bust. Cool. That's it. Give in or get. Bang. Now. Wow. Giving or getting. Either way, it don't matter. <laughs> love that. Fair. Animal. Happy endings. Fair. Gotta love them. G2. All right. G2. I'm going with a, a category I like a lot. It's called food, and it's called burnt ends. So brisket, burnt ends, you know, barbecue, uh, bur burnt ends. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you expect to win with that kind of explanation. Burnt ends. G3, dude. There's Delicious so many food. horses always just fucking walking by my apartment. is out of control. Okay, sorry. Uh, G3, the end of a chug. Ah! Woo! I got caught. I got caught. Woof, woof. Motherfucker, man. Uh. I don't personally really struggle with chugging, but I know, like, Snacks has a lot of trouble chugging. Yeah, yeah. Getting to the end of a chug or getting to the end of a shot, too, at the bar. Like, once you're done with the chug and you can finally put it down and you're like, oh, I'm done with that bullshit. I can that, beat. That, that three seconds after a fucking shot where, it, like, everything is back to normal again, mm -hmm. it's, like, the most relieving thing. All right. So, you you finish putting the poison into your fucking face hole and, and you're back to life. So, G3, end of a chug, end of a shot, whatever. End of fucking liquor going down your face hole. Leads me into 01, the end of a run or a workout when you got that fucking dopamine flying out your ears like a clown, you know, with smoke coming out, feeling really good about life. You're like, yeah, now I'm fit. Like you worked out one time in the last six months, but you went for that run and now you feel ripped. I know Animal keeps like picking a shirt up to see if he's got a six pack after not working out for the entire quarantine. So end of a run, end of a workout, you feel good as fuck. Top of the world, 01. I will agree with that. It's a, it's a great feeling. You know, congrats on the sex, brother. It's my turn. Uh, oh, two mm -hmm. end of preseason football. And this one is very simple because the end of preseason football means that regular season is going to start. And that's where all the action is. That's where the fantasy comes in. That's where the Broncos start winning games. That's where a Super okay. Bowl run the, starts. The, the end of that's your segment was where right there. we go. End of preseason football. Big fan of that one. You're very true. That when, was a good one. When week four wraps up and you know, like your fantasy league's about to draft, yeah, oh. like in the next couple of days, Thursday night football about to kick off. End of preseason like that almost yep. makes up for your terrible it's first a good one. one. It's a good <laughs> one. Go. Burnt ends are great. Uh, so my next one is the end of a work week. So Friday, five o'clock comes around. Weekend hits. You're going in. You're getting drunk. You're eating fast food. You're doing your thing. You're having sex. Happy endings. End of a work week. So you're confirming paid sex. Literally. Okay. Fair. Yeah. Wow. Uh huh. Some guy you are. Listen, listen. Got to risk it to get the biscuit. What's the next letter? A1. A1. Steak sauce. A1 is something I thought of because I recently just did it. I don't know if I told you. Uh, the ending of GTA. Any GTA when you finally beat the monstrosity of a game. So this bad. is a personal one, so can you stop? Yeah, it's personal. You, you just did burnt ends like a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, it's a, end it's of a, GTA. A worldwide food. <laughs> and when you beat GTA, it's a and worldwide you, food. you really you bang out all those hours playing that goddamn game, killing all those people, all those innocents. Blowing choppers out of the goddamn air. You feel so successful, so high on life. You're done. You're up. I, I'm sorry, but I feel like after I spent hours and hours playing a video game and finally beat it, I didn't even feel like good, but I'd also oh, feel no, like. I was so relieved. Kind of I, like, I worked so hard to beat GTA 5. Kind of depressed. 5. Probably. I was done. But done. I just couldn't me. be happier. 
All I'm, right. I haven't played Xbox since. Shut your fucking mouth. A2. Love that. We're going defensive ends. <laughs> defensive ends. Because they are a cornerstone of your team for football. If you want to have a good football team, you need to have some good guys on the end rushing the passer. So defensive ends are some of the best ends. Hate that. It's a good one. You know what I love? It's not a good one. The end of a slice of pizza, a.k.a. the crust. I mean, see this one, this one I have a problem with because I don't ever want to finish the pizza. I just want to. You know, I want to like. The crust is the it. best part of a pizza. Crust is delicious, but it's like it depends. It's not on, a good depends, feeling. It depends on the pizzeria. It's not a good feeling eating a pizza crust. Not the no, there, now it's bad, done. There are some bad crusts out there. I mean, sure, there are some bad defensive ends out there too. That's a good. Yeah, point. there's there are some bad everything we've listed so far out there. So the best of the bads are really good pizza crust. GTA. Too, was terrible. End of the pizza. There are people that don't like pizza crust, like yeah, the ones so that better not. You the vote ones for him. The ones that give the pizza crust. No, I don't want their vote. Their vote why are you, fucking. Why are you begging for votes? Like is, I'm not begging. For their votes are like dirty votes. fucking. Vote that's blood money, blood votes. People who don't like crust. You clearly suffered some childhood trauma. Yeah. I don't. It might be of the sexual kind. You're it might be of the physical kind. Shut the fuck up. Like, yeah. Just eat your crust, bitch. See, now you're on my side. You say. Yeah. If you vote for him. Yeah. So I'm just saying. So a three. End of pizza. The crust. T one. Uh, end of my life. It's a great one. Literally. Spot on. That's By the way, the pizza crust thing, when you get Domino's and you dip it in the garlic sauce. Oh, yeah, oh, I'm oh, a huge crust guy. Oh, I love crust. Oh, this shit just not locked up my victory over here. Look at these two fucking losers. What, do you mean? what are you talking about? All right, so. You're infatuated with my choice. T2. If I wasn't dead, I'd win. T2. We're going with a throwback from your childhood. Dead ends. Like a, a road. Like a dead end road. And I'm going to tell you why. Good job. Here's why. It's because when you were a kid and you had a dead end road, it was the best road to play on. You want to play hockey. You want to play basketball. You want to play fucking stickball. Guess what? The field. Cars aren't driving up and down. Yeah, but you're talking about when you're like eight, nine years old and like your parents maybe don't want you going where they can't see you. What if so you, you don't hang out in the front? Uh, so, so wait, my, mom, dead end road, my mom knew I was What if you no don't bitch. live on a dead, dead end road? Your parents are just going to go watch you play sports on a dead end road? Just no, like you asshole. There? That's why I'm saying that's what's so great about dead end roads. I lived on a dead end. It was, it's good. It's, it's pretty dope. It's like, good. you don't have to worry about constant traffic. You want to fuck around on your bikes. You want to fuck around in the street. You can. You've lost every, every urban person, though, unfortunately. You lost all the votes there. Whatever. I like dead ends, though. Whatever. You guys like burnt ends? <laughs> <laughs> Great burnt ends in the you guys city. like burnt ends? I, li I like the dead ends, though. I thought that was a good pick. I think growing up on a dead end, uh, definitely. Yeah, you had a great spot back there. Yeah, expedites the childhood the woods. a little bit. Well, we went back there the other day. Yeah, we actually did. We went through a wall. We walked right past your house. By my house? Yeah. yeah. I was looking for you brother. Check, you check was, on my mother? No, I was looking for brother Riles. I didn't see him. Yeah, no, he was probably hiding out. <laughs> he was looking for you. Probably in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm gonna wrap it up with, uh, <laughs> you know, same fucking conclusion every football season after T3, the baby. Super Bowl champions in the off season, the end of the Dallas Cowboys season every goddamn year. That stupid, creepy fucking fan base deserves nothing but misery. And they get it every year from their beloved Dallas Cowboys. Cheers to 8-8 eight eight this year, fuckers. T3, end of the Cowboys season. That is her to ghost. That is the new era of Fade the Public. Expect this fucking energy week in, week out. Expect, expect some chairs. Expect, the, <laughs> expect yeah, some chairs. Expect the content. Chairs and table stuff. See yeah, that'll probably, we're going to be saying that probably for the next six weeks. It's going to be a little I'm time. bringing a folding chair. Next this is going to be a... I, the the, the plan is to come back this weekend and start the base of the table, so hopefully we can film some of that, maybe pop like a little bit. table will yeah. be done in a year. Um, I mean, you have the key. You have the key. So yeah. you come by whenever you want. I don't give a shit. Um, so I want to try and come now before they start reopening everything and it starts getting crazy again. Yeah, the traffic. Yeah, we, we got here in Traffic, minutes, yeah. So. yeah. So, yeah, traffic was... There's, there's okay, so, minutes. yeah, as we said, expect a lot of quick movements and changes on the episodes over the next couple of weeks energy will stay the same the people will stay the same the editing will probably only get better because that's what scott does we have a name for the podcast we got a name it is yeah. ftp fade the public Ben, try and fucking distract me from my point you never will you can't break this mental toughness when you get strong to start crying about the giants <laughs> bad bro you guys can't be pussies. You're going to get a little spots on you. you Love that shit. Steve, I'm sorry. This is your third year in the league. Step your game up. How oh. many? No, no. Oh. This is your fucking third year in the league. Step your game up. Did you change your shirt? <laughs> Very nice. <laughs>
you see what I heard? <laughs> no. Yeah, you gotta look at it. <laughs> I can't see it. Are you fucking kidding me? Is this a joke? Where did you? Why? How? Where do I get one? Editing and football and trades. That's what he does. Go join the Discord channel again. Cop some merch. One hundred percent. Yeah, get that for merch. One hundred percent of profit. Straight to the pocket, baby. Straight to Make St. sure Jude's. you uh, you comment and like. <laughs> Make sure you comment on how bad animals hurt a goats or I was witty. That's was out. Wise. We love you. They Audio is.